founder of Train for Your Best. Joffrey is a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a fellow of Applied Functional Science. He spent more than 13 years as a Division I strength and conditioning coach and spent some time also working in the MBA. For more than 15 years, Joffrey has had the opportunity to train thousands of professional college and high school athletes as well as help those who may have a different goal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, you won't hear cortisol stuff from me, so I apologize. But um, I just want to get a quick view of the room of kind of where, how many, do we have like physical therapists, any physical therapists, occupational therapists, athletic trainers, good, strength conditioning coaches, good, stat people, good, marketing, good. So, hey, I, I want to get through this in like 15 minutes and I want to save time for questions. Nobody, I can put all you together in a room and, and write down how many comments you've been to. I've doubled that as a total and because I've been to a million of them and I'd still be paying those back forever. But I know this, you learn a heck of a lot more, less off the PowerPoint than you do this Q&A and get to know what you want to know. So I, I, I'm going to run through mine quickly, try to, but I like to talk so that could be a problem. But I'm going to try to really get through it quickly and then I want to save some time so make sure you have some questions otherwise we'll be really quiet here. Okay, so let's try to get that done. Um, my journey, just real quick, obviously she just kind of went through that, which I appreciate. Um, you know, I got my master's degree in exercise science. I've been a college training conditioning coach. I've spent my whole life in injury prevention and sports performance. I worked in the NBA. Um, if you don't know who Gary Gray is and you're an athletic trainer or strength coach, you better look him up. Um, he's my mentor. Um, I spent three years in a, in a physical therapy clinic doing all the cash-based um, stuff so I could learn a business model. Um, and now I open up my own business in Weston or Wausau, Wisconsin called Train Your Best, where we do sport performance and some loving injury recovery. Um, I also travel around a lot right now, um, working with professional athletes. That's me yesterday working with Kirk Cousins in Michigan. So um, <clears throat> I do a lot of traveling as well. Why do I live in Wausau? Because I have a little boy that's four. So everyone's always like, why the hell did you end up in Wausau? So um, I have a little boy that's four and that's where he lives. So um, if you have a kid, you know that priorities change automatically real quickly. So that's why I'm there. Love it. Can't, can't, um. So stats, so talk, that's why the conference is here. So I want to kind of talk a little bit about that. We have more strength conditioning coaches, more athletic trainers, more physical therapists than ever before. There's more data collections, more everything, but guess what, injuries are higher every single year. Like, whoa, what's going on here? It is my recommendation or my um, statistical advice that my field is causing most of them. So that's, that's negative, um, but for you stat people, if you want to start trying to find out why, you start looking into my profession and you'll find a lot about it. Okay, um, that's a side tangent. 3.5 million children went to the hospital for an ovary surgery in 2013. 150,000 ACL tears a year in sports, primarily basketball, football, soccer, volleyball. $15,000 each for each one of those, so that's why people are looking at analytics, right? Um, that's not cheap. That's why a lot of doctors have big boats and stuff, right? And then 30% of Division I uh, sport injuries come from obese injuries. So my job, obviously, as a strength conditioning coach is to prevent, number one, the spending. Number two, keep athletes healthy, right? Here's what I find fascinating. Oh, it's, it's an overuse injury, Joe. We got to have them do less. Really? Because if you go into any parent, you go to a head coach and go, hey, you know, I don't walk in the NBA and go, listen, guys, we just got to do less work. We can stop shooting, stop running around. That's not going to happen, right? Why? Because our performance is keeps getting better. There's an awesome... Um, what are they called? Memes? Is that what they're called? Memes. Memes? Okay, sorry. That's terrible. So there's also memes of like where people would finish in the 100 meter dash over the last 100 years, or the, I mean the, the 100 meter run in the Olympics, and you see where Usain Bolt finishes, and then it shows where everybody else is. Carl Lewis is even on the page, right? I mean, he's 10 yards back. You know what I mean? So we have not maximized our athletics performance yet. We just keep getting bigger, faster, stronger, and more skilled. I want to agree with that. So for you to sit there and tell a parent or coach, stop doing so much work. That's why you're getting hurt. You need to do less, really. Because if my son's not doing something, guess what? He's not getting better. Or my player isn't, right? So I'm not saying that I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm not, I don't think overuse injuries is, is a problem. I do think it's a problem. I talk about it all the time. But it's not we got to do less. It's we got to be smarter, right? And so being less would mean we're not as skilled or not as strong, and, and that's not fair either. So I think there's a common, common thread there. So throughout my career, um, one of the things that, that I've had an issue with is collecting the data, right, the stats, is then analyzing it. I've done FMS, I've done, all, I've done it for 15 years, I've done this, I've done that, I've done everything you can possibly imagine. But the thing is, now what? What do I do with this? 
right? How do I, and then how is it different for each individual? What about the sport? What about the individual athlete? We're all different, right? Your hamstring, left hamstring is more or less mobile than mine in abduction, adduction, introntation, flexion, extension, extrontation, right? I don't know. But, but that if it is, if yours is 10 degrees less in introntation, which would be significant, but I, uh, but we go to the same college, are we going to be on different programs? No. Are we on the same program? Is that fair? No. Because you're, you, you need to work on introntation, right? So one thing that's become an issue for me is how do we do that scalable, right? How do I do that from here and I can train someone in California or Florida, right? How do I do that that somebody can test themselves, right? And how do I do that that makes it so individualized for that person that they get better on a person? Everyone wants that individualized personal training program, right? Or individual, individual rehab setting or individual um, you know, injury prevention program. And we need that. But how do we do that? That's kind of what I'm going to talk to you about today a little bit. So sports performance injury, the factors to the two injuries that we have, or why we get hurt, or why our sports performance isn't as good, number one, asymmetries. Right? So if I, we measure ankle dorsiflexion, so if I'm here and I can keep my right heel down and I can get, you know, what X amount of degrees and I come over here and I can't get, I only, my heel pops up within a second, I have an asymmetry, right? And that asymmetry is going to be big in my performance and my risk of injury. That's been researched over and over again a million times, okay? Also, another thing that's researched that causes, again, sports performance and injury, and injury reasoning or is the same to me. It's like if, if, if you have a tight left ankle that doesn't go into dorsiflexion, number one, your risk of injury is high, but how well is that thing gonna load? So it's the same thing, right? It doesn't matter, we gotta get it better. So it doesn't matter that it's, you have um, pain or not pain or you can't do something or do something, it doesn't matter, we just gotta get it better, right? And then symmetrical weaknesses. You know, you might have, Oh, your hamstring mobility is the same on both sides, but it's awful, right? So that's a symmetrical um, weakness that we want to get into. So one study that I've done lately for, for the analytic people is I did a single leg broad jump test, single leg low, jump out, land on two feet. For every single kid in the DC Everett School District, this is about 5,500 kids, okay? We did every kid, K through 12. And then with begin year and at the end of the year. So PE teachers weren't real happy with me because that took a lot of time, right? But when I went back and analyzed the data, I don't, those numbers, if you guys are in the last part, all those numbers, I'm, I took stats 20 years ago, right? So I'm not a great, but I know this. What I'm looking at, I'm looking for trends, I'm looking for asymmetries, I'm looking for symmetrical weaknesses, and this is what I found, which is very curious, or very interesting. Kids got better every year, shocking, through seventh grade, okay? About the same rate. After seventh grade, the numbers were very chaotic. Asymmetries never were significant until seventh and eighth grade, massive. Of the 500 kids that we tested, 100 of them had an asymmetrical difference of greater than 10 inches, or greater than a foot in just one single leg jump. A foot, like that's big. 30 of them had a greater than 24 inches. Okay, so it's kind of going to show what is happening in seventh and eighth grade to these kids where we start to plateau quickly, we develop all these asymmetries. What's happening? Is it sports specificity? Is it, oh, by the way, they only have PE half a year in seventh and eighth grade, not a full year anymore. Interesting, right? There's a lot of stats into that that start to kind of show what's happening in not only just college sports, professional sports, but by it, right? And what's going on in the educational piece. So, just to point that out real quick. <clears throat> in order to be individualized, we need to know the following. What sport, no position, that's spelled wrong, obviously. Goals, um, but more importantly, what is their current genetic, structural, neuromuscular makeup, right? Because I, there's one thing that's true, is if I train one quarterback and train another quarterback, the program is 100% different every day, right? It's not like, oh, it's just a throwing program. I'm just cook, cook, you cut that baby out. Because if somebody lacks more intralization of their left hip and have a hard time throwing, right? But then that, that might be something we need to work on to throw the ball harder, but then other athlete, had, and he doesn't have enough extra rotation in his shoulder, right? So we can't have the same program. Okay, so we want to individualize everybody's program the most that we can. <clears throat> we need to know their mobility, their stability, their strength, their power, their endurance, and their speed, right? 
we are looking for a competitive edge. Competitive edge has everything to do with injury prevention as well. If you are injured, you are worthless. That's kind of like the, the quote on, and when I worked in the NBA, that was what we always talked about. Injured, worthless, right? Because you can't help us. You can't score any points, you're not getting any stats, you can't get in the floor. There's nothing you can really do besides be a psychological person, and that's great, but there's 30,000 of those in the stands, right? So that, that's not necessarily needed, okay? Um, <clears throat> So with all that being said, and again, I, this is my platform that I use, okay? You guys are more than willing to email me and I'll give you free membership to it for as long as you want, really, I don't really care. Um, I came up with a program that's called Connexit, okay? And I'm gonna show you how that kind of works, if this video works, which would be shocking if it did. It seems that today's online physical training is more like walking into a library with thousands of exercises. This is great when you know exactly what you're looking for, but most people don't. So we've created a more personal and effective experience. Connect is a user-friendly IT solution that delivers individualized training for the mobile user. Connexit is training made personal, individualized and prescripted specifically to your sport, restrictions, and needs. Connexit goes beyond traditional fitness to three-dimensionally unlock biomechanical constraints that degrade industrial performance to release the full potential you already have within you. So how does it work? Well, it's as simple as one, two, three, and as sophisticated as you can ever want it to be. First, pick your sport, like American football, basketball, fitness and well-being, golf, ice hockey, running, soccer, tennis, volleyball, and more. For the multi-sport athlete, you can change sports anytime. Second, the Connected Avatar precisely guides you through performance testing to determine what is holding back your performance and discovers where your opportunities are. Third, the powerful Connexit training engine uses your specific information to create a precise, personalized, and prescriptive movement training program just for you. Your program is then automatically updated and progressed each and every time you use it, creating an always relevant, ever fresh training experience. The result is greater gains in less time with more value and competitive advantage for you. So what are you waiting for? Push your move on. That's my uh, sales pitch. Right? So the, the reason I showed you that is because this is this is what this is what I use and what I build for my platform to train thousands of people every day individually without me having to be there and test everybody, right? So what happens is is these uh, my clients they get on the next day. Self testing. Oh, sorry. Is what's holding you back and makes training more personal. I apologize. These tests are created to measure the space you can occupy the space you can control, and the space you can dump. So what they do is they get on Connexit, which is the online platform, and then what happens is is they choose their sport, right? If they play a sport, basketball, football, baseball, hockey, whatever, then they choose their position, right? Oh, I'm a quarterback, great. And I'm a quarterback and I'm 12 years old, great. What, what do you want to work on? Gives them tons of questions, 25 questions for each sport, okay? After they choose that, it takes them into their performance and testing center. What happens then is they grab a tape measure, four cones and a stopwatch, and they start evaluating themselves. Okay, what's your ankle dorsiflexion? Here's how you do it, this is what you're looking for. How do you measure your hamstrings? Okay, turn your toe in, reach to the wall, how far back can you get from the wall to get that? Okay, how much extension do you have? Let's put one foot here, let's reach back, see how far you can get your foot away from the wall in your left hip with your right foot belly toe touching. Then it moves into um, strength performance test. Then it moves into power. Okay, stand on your right jump, stand on your right jump laterally, stand on your left jump laterally, rotate, bunt all 3D movements, right? Then it moves into endurance test, it moves into speed test. They test themselves, themselves, right? Or somebody that's there, or if they want to pay me to test them, great. I use the same test for everyone, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then they plug in their data, and then it's done, right? The data's in there, then they're ready to start working out. They go to the platform, and then what happens is, is they, what, how long do you have today? Do you have 10 minutes all the way to, all the way to 90 minutes? And then, oh, I only have 15 minutes, and I wanna warm up for my AAU practice, great. 15 minutes, tip warm up. You can warm up, you can work on your stability, you can work on your strength, you can work on your power, you can work on your endurance, you can work on your flexibility, right? But it's tailored around your results. 
So for four years, just so you know from an analytical standpoint, for four years I algorithm every single sport, every single position, every single age, every single goal, and then based on every single performance test, oh, their left is greater than their right in their hamstring, better put that in there. In their, so what the system does, it looks for asymmetries, it looks for tightnesses, it looks for asymmetries in your power and speed and everything, and it draws them out. So when I go to work out, guess what's gonna work on? Those, right? And so it's been a four year process to just get that up and running, of just sitting down and literally and literally coming up with an algorithm for each person, around 7,500 exercises, by the way. So it's been a long time, right, coming. So, but I knew that's where I had to go from an analytical standpoint because everybody's different, every sport's different. Because when people go, oh, we want to get strong, yeah, what? Ricky Fowler's strong at hitting golf club, that's why it goes 350 yards. But if you watch in the weight room, is he gonna bench the most? No. So strength is relative to the position and the movement at which it needs to be able to do. So I love to challenge people like strength coach, like, oh yeah, we, we just want to work on general strength. What the hell is general, but cut that out. What is general strength, right? So how do you know, so tell me, how do you know if someone's generally strong or not? You ever want to quiz a strength coach, ask them that. So, so what do you work on? Well, if they ever say general strength, like, can you define that for me? And then tell me someone who is and who isn't and their mind will just will be baffled, because I don't even know how you'd even answer that, right? Do you go right to the bench? Do you go to squat? Do you go to, because the best benches aren't necessarily the best squatters, last time I checked, right? And if it was all about how strong you are for athletic performance and intervention, power lifters would make a hell of a lot more money playing the NFL than they would power lifting. So they wouldn't be power lifters, I promise you that, right? So it's not just about strength, it's about strength at what? Is it rotating? Is it going vertical? Is it throwing? Is it running? Is it sprinting? Is it, is it shuffling? Is it picking something up? What is it? That strength is important, I agree, but at what? And then we gotta train them for that, right? By the way, that's like injury prevention, because the injured body gets hurt when? When it goes in a position it can't control. Well, guess what the positions are, what the sport is, right? You need to play chaotic sports, like football, basketball, um, hockey, you know, I even consider tennis a pretty bad sport. You look at those sports, and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of overuse injuries in those sports. For the overuse, the overuse injuries in the non-chaotic sports, golf, baseball, volleyball, right? Sports that require the same actions, running. Sports that require the same action with the same movement and the same plane of motion, right? Over and over and over again. So it's interesting to look at those stats too and determine kind of what's going on. So that's how we, that's how I kind of develop connects. And you can see here, when they come in, they choose how long they want to do it for and then what they want to work on. And then when they click start, it algorithms it up. And by the way, I had to do 5,700 exercises in a black suit with all these freaking things on me because my team thought it'd be cooler to have an avatar instead of looking at me, which I agree, right? So then we send those off and now it's, an, it's, a, it's a cartoon character. We're in the process right now. You ever play like video games like Madden and stuff and you can like get your guy fat or strong or big. So that we're in the process of adding that too so that kids can like make themselves, right? Put their jersey on. So it would be really cool. Um, we haven't got that far yet. That's another million dollar uh, adventure. So, but that's kind of, I know I'm kind of spin and spurn a little bit so I want to get done. But that's kind of what we've created and why I use stats to register the test they train. That's an example of another test. Um, one of the things that we added to that's really cool is not everybody wants to use my exercise program. So if you're a trainer or you're an athletic trainer and you're like, okay, this person's, I'm fine, they can use Connexit for mobility and everything, but here's the deal. We, like, there's not like seated leg curl on there, right? It's not, it's really functionally based, lunging and reaching and pushing. It's not stuff that like there's one piece of $8,000 equipment, but if you like that, you can videotape that and add it up to their account really easily. So you can see that there's different exercises that you can add to. Um, so that's, that's connected. I don't want to talk any more about that because it's not a sales pitch to you. I'm just telling you how I use stats and how I've used it to algorithm people's programs and um, how I go about using it. So now let's open it up to Q&A. Like, so that's like all time. First of all, when they tell me you have 30 minutes to present, I'm like, I'm not even coming. Because 30, I need three hours, dude. Like, that's not enough. So that's an all time record for me. So I'm pretty impressed. Um, questions, please? Anybody? Yes. Uh, so I'm very connected with trail running and to some extent ultra running. Yes. Do you, I mean, obviously that's an endurance sport. Yes. And it is, as such, people are prone to injuries. Do you have any um, studies or particular training programs that are oriented towards ultra runners? Yeah. 
So when you do the, when you, so what's interesting is if you if you have a son that's seven years old and he wants to be a better quarterback, we're going to work on quarterback moves, right? When you have a 35 year old runner that runs all the time and is having overuse injuries, guess what we're going to work on? Everything but running. So when I look at running and I'm like, oh, it's sagittal plane movement, it's front to back. Guess what? All we're going to work on rotation and lateral movement, right? Because if you don't use it, you lose it. That's how the body functions. So if you don't use it and you lose it, you've lost the ability to move laterally, you've lost the ability to rotate. So then all of a sudden, you know when those people mostly get hurt? Marathon or stuff, when they get in on a car, and they pick something up from the ground? We do every, so they run forward all day long, guess what we do when we warm up? Everything's posterior. Backward jog, backward shuffle, backward run wide, backward, everything's posterior, right? Because they are, they, what am I gonna do? Oh yeah, uh, you know, I won the, the Chicago Marathon, but I'm beat up. Oh, let's let's really look at your running gait and let's really try to figure this out. No, it's just beat the crap. Let's let's turn it around. And what's interesting, here's a good here's a good study. Okay, my mentor Gary Gray, look him up. I don't know if it's published or not. He hates, he hates um, research because he thinks it's stupid and there's pros and cons to that. But that's a whole other topic. But what we did was he's big into golf. Nike Golf was the first, the first logo at every Nike Golf. And we took a bunch of golfers and they hit the ball a million miles, right? And they plateau, right? Everyone plateaus, 300 yards or whatever. So they're like, how do I get this to kind of advantage? He gives them a left hand club. He goes, learn how to hit this. When you get done hitting, hit 10% of how many balls you hit right handed, hit 10% left handed. They did it for a week, came back, everyone had 15 yards. Every single one of them. Why? You, the body likes, the body only responds to an outside stimulus greater than it's gone through before. If the stimulus is always the same, what happens? It plateaus. You also all of a sudden have to go left-handed, whoa, I'm adapting to strength, I'm adapting to stability, I'm adapting to balance. Start throwing some polar opposite stuff at people and their body will adapt back to better. Here's another example. Ben Wallace, you ever heard of Ben Wallace, NBA player? So I'm with the Pistons, okay? My athletic trainer, Arnie Canner, who's the, the, the smartest man I've ever met in my life, and grows his own herbs and stuff to get the body weight pills and long story shit. But so, he, um, Ben Wallace wanted to get to 400 on his bench, that was his thing, right? And, he, and so we weren't, you know, I don't really care what guy's bench, doesn't matter, but he wanted to do a great, you know, I'm not going to tell Ben, no. And so he tried to get it, he applied totally like 380. He was there at literally 16 months. And he'd get frustrated, he's trying to end all this stuff. And so Arnie's like, let me, let me try something for you. So he just put the bar on, and then he had this pendulum thing that was on it, that one had 10 pounds on it, one had 5 pounds. But it would, as he was moving the bar, it would pendulum back and forth. So you're like this. So he goes, just do four sets of 20 every day for a week, and then let's go back and test you. So he wouldn't do it, right? So I had to do it. And then I benched. I didn't tell him what I got. He goes, no, I'm not going to tell you. You got to do it. So you know, these guys want to know. So he does it, 405 next day. Right? So again, it's the body, body going through an outside, that's the number one thing I've learned about the human body, it's the most remarkable thing, but it only responds to stimulus greater than it's gone through before. If you keep doing the same thing, it'll plateau, done. Thank you, Joe, I already know how to do that, I'm not gonna change for you, end of conversation. Right? So, yes. what do you, you know you Darvish is? Yeah. It, so he throws right-handed, but then he also throws both ends left-handed. Yes. The same thing, do you recommend that for like, let's say, an adolescent? Oh, what absolutely. So my yeah. son, he's four and a half, poor kid, right? I mean, he's got yeah, me as a dad, like, you're kidding me, right? So he play, we have this air hockey game, right? So we play one game right-handed, one game left-handed. Everything we do, we, now, he, when he bats and stuff, he's better right-handed, but I make him do both, I make him throw both. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to see something funny? I'm with Kirk Cousins in, in Holland, this guy's a god in Holland, Michigan. I mean, there's people, people, when we go to the training studio, we have to stop going, because there's literally, like, 300 people standing around, just, so here's what I do just to, just to kind of piss them off a little bit. I'm like, hey, Kirk, let's get warmed up. We'll do some. So all of a sudden I go, okay, we're going to do lunge to throw matrix left-handed. And he's like, damn it. Because he looks like an idiot, right? He's like, try, he let, and he's like, oh, he's an NFL quarterback? Because they don't even put it together, a lot of them, because they don't even, it's just a spectacle. So yes, I firmly, I'm big on trying to symmetric. Now, obviously, we don't throw as many left as right. There's no way. But it's great for the body, it's great stability training, it's great core training. And guess what it does? It gives a smile on his face. You know, so there's a lot of reasons why I do that. I do not want my son to be overly asymmetrical at seven. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. that, that happens very quickly to people. So yes, I, I not as many reps, obviously, but I do like the, you know, he's not gonna be a you know, throw left or right hand pitcher in the MLB. No, I don't think that that's plausible, but 
Yeah, yeah I think it's great. It's so great. Especially with throwers because I play college baseball. Yeah. And I know that I pitch, so I notice my aim symmetry is that my left lat is huge compared to my right lat. Right. Like for throwing all the time, even though I used to throw right handed. Right. So you think just to be able to balance that out, just everyone just right. get out there, a couple right. both sides of throwing. So right think side. about this. Think about this. If you had a, a dollar for every throw you made, mm -hmm. right handed. And 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 then and then and over here and then throw left hand over here. This would be like sixty million dollars. This would be eight dollars, yeah. right? So you got to kind of look at that and be like, whoa, where's my investment? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I need to look at making some changes here to try to get it back. Just like if I would run forward, what am I missing? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's a big key. So great question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you mentioned the very. How do you pronounce it? Uh, Ari. Ari. I love yeah. it. Uh, you said at the very beginning that. Uh, <laughs> So there's an increase in like athletic trainers, physical therapists. There's also an increase in injuries, and you think that uh, it may be because my profession, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, could yeah. you explain just a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, because we, I think we train the wrong things. We're worried about what the number is in the weight room, when really the only thing that matters is the performance on the field, right? It goes back to my analogy of if if the okay, here's a good one, power clean. Okay, take that for instance. We, everyone wants to power clean to get extension of the hips, which I agree there's no extension of the hips. This is anatomical. Okay, this is extension of the hip, but regardless. And Usain Bolt is the whatever Usain Bolt's fastest runner ever, ever. Lance like, right? If you search Usain Bolt 19, or 2006 power clean on Instagram, or I mean on YouTube, you will see him try to power clean, and it, he's laughing because he has no idea what the hell's going on. By the way, he's already in Olympics, Olympia then. So if it was all about how much you power clean, was about how of a sprinter you are, the correlation to be there, right? So why we just determine that, oh, this lift, the, that, the more you bench, the better offensive lineman you are. Again, I can't say this enough. If that was the case, the best bench presser would be an offensive lineman, and the lineman would be the best bench presser. It's not the case. You know, so there's not, an, there's not as much of a correlation between weight room strength numbers, how much I can push and pull and lift something up, versus sports performance like we think there is. And, and I think we get so caught up in that that we, um, we think that that's the answer and that's where we spend 90% of our time. Because again, coaches want numbers, everyone wants numbers. What did our numbers go up? Did we get faster in this three cone agility? Great, 40 yard dash, right? I, NFL players run on typically one 40 yard dash if you're, a, if you're a back a game, right, on average. Yeah, that's our test, see how fast people are. It doesn't make any sense, right? The, the test should be, can you run out, stop on a dime, and then cut right or left based on what the person in front of you does? That should be the test, right? So I think the, the problem is the test, the exercise and the test are in completely different file parts right now, and what we need to realize is the test is the exercise, and the exercise is the test. If you want to be, if you want to evaluate, and I think it's fascinating, like Bill Belichick comes out now and goes, I don't care if the, if the combine numbers are. We draft on what we see on the film and when we interview, that's it. And if you go now to the NFL Combine, which I've had the privilege to be there every year, and you, except last year, when you go, what's interesting is they do these, these tests, but that's all dog and pony show. What they do is they spend about nine hours in a room with you interviewing you. They want to know who your girlfriend is, how you treat her, they want to know everything like that. And then they want to know, then they're going to MRI. Oh yeah, when I was three, I, I cut a finger down my right. Let's get that MRI. You know, I mean, that's how that's how MRIs are now with these NFL players. That's all they want to know. I mean, are you going to not draft Kevin Durant? Prime, prime example. Kevin Durant goes whatever he's the top two or three best basketball players in the NBA. Goes in the NBA Combine, puts 185 on, and doof, damn near broke his rib cage. Right? And like, whoa! Did anyone go up? Oh, can't draft him. We can't get 185. Oh God, we can't have him. Right? No. Again, it's all about. So strength coaches, in my opinion, we get so caught up in, in analytic numbers about numbers in the weight room, but the real numbers are really like the field. So we gotta do a better job of coming up with better tests and exercises to make it simulate that, because that's truly what the performance is about, if that makes sense. It'd be like, oh yeah, I really, I studied geometry for, you know, every day for nine hours, and then you go take the test and it's history. You'd be like, oh crap. And that's what I think we do a lot in the weight room. We're, we're, doing, we're doing things that don't make any sense to me. I don't, I don't get it. You know, that's my personal opinion on it. So we can do one more probably, and then we can go. I'll be here too for the next 10 minutes and we're going to close up with you. So, so that app sounds like it's an individual user. If you had a team that wanted to use that for their entire team, yeah. what would you recommend? 
that. So what you do is, so here's what happens. Yeah. yeah. So what, what hap what's cool though is I can be, it has a, again, I'm not here to promote connection, but it has a coaching dashboard where I can actually log into my account. I can have all of you on my coaching dashboard and I can see what all of you are doing every day. So if I'm a club coach or something and I don't, hey, I don't know strength conditioning and I don't have a facility for it, I can look at that and practice and say, okay guys, we're not gonna practice till next Thursday. Now over the weekend, I want everyone to get two hours in of endurance training and connects it, okay, team break, cool. And then next Wednesday night, I can look and say who hasn't been on it, who hasn't, because it, it logs it all for them. So that, the, all the analytics of I can see who's logged in, what they did. Now they could hit play and sit on their ass and do nothing, right? But I don't want those players anyways. That's why I tell people, like, yeah, but and I'll say, well, then you might want to re, re but every time a coach says, it, like, yeah, but then I could, they, but they could just hit play and I wouldn't even see him do it. I need to see him do it. And I'd be like, that's great, but you might want to, you might want to consider then looking for different players because I don't think those are the ones you want. And then their eyes light up. And, you put it back on them, right? <laughs> like I said, I'll be around here five, ten more minutes, sitting here, kind of packing up. So you have any more questions? My business card's up here. Contact me anytime. This is probably the worst talk for me because I'm not a huge analytic person. Other than I, and I realize I'm like, why do you always talk about analytics? But I just realize that I probably do it more than any other thing I do because I'm always evaluating, so and always looking at things. So thanks for having me. Appreciate it.